درود و سلام علیکم به تمام ایرانیان عزیز و محترم در هر کجای دنیا که هستین انشاءالله سیزه بدر موفقی داشتین و به قول خودمون ایرانیات نحسی سیزه رو از امسال از خانواده هامون و صفره هامون دور کردیم سیزه بدر برنامه تایم تیوی خیلی موفق بود دیروز و ما امروز اینجا هستیم که کتابی رو که اونجا شروع کردن به معرفی کردن The Bridge of Isfahan توسط یک خانواده آمریکایی پابلش شده معرفی کنیم به تمام ایرانیامون این کتاب سال 1940 نوشته شده توسط خانم نیلا کرام کوک آری لوری رو بهتون معرفی میکنم نوه این خانومه و این کتاب توسط ایشون داره معرفی میشه به کامیونیتی ایرانی ها به علاوه کل دنیا من شخصا فکر میکنم این کتاب باید تو کتاب خونه هر ایرانی باشه نیلا از زبون خودش داستان ماجره هایی رو که توی ایران داشته تعریف کرده اونی رو که به چشم دیده به زبون خودش توی ناول معرفیش کرده که چه اتفاقاتی توی اون دوران که درست بعد از جنگ جهانی دوم بوده به ایرانیا و شاید بقیه دنیا داره میگه به قول امریکایی ها She is talking about her side of story آری جون سویدی معرفی میکنم خانم آری لوری نوه خانم نیلا کرام کوک اجازه میدم که خودشون یه چند کلامی با شما داشته باشه به زبون انگلیسی و بیشتر در خدمتون خواهیم بود سویدار اینترودوست بوک and uh, you can speak English don't worry about it and just say what you think is best suited for your grandmother okay. to know for the Persian community to know about her سلام علیکم <coughs> my grandmother was born in um, the US and to an old American family at the t turn of the 19th, uh, sorry, 20th century. And she was born into a very literary family that loved to travel and they loved the theater and the arts. And when she was uh, a teenager, she went to Greece with her family where she met my father's father, got married and had my father and got divorced. And ultimately, she ended up in Iran after doing a stint as a disciple of Gandhi and um, living in India for a little while. Uh, she lived in Iran in the 1940s. She was working for the U.S. Department of State as a cultural attache. And she also started a dance company there with the help of her principal dancers, Aida and Nejad Ahmadzadeh, who now live in Manchester, England. And she was um, very enthusiastic about Persian culture and she spoke Farsi. She was very gifted as a linguist. She translated the Quran. She was uh, just very, very knowledgeable and, and excited about um, Persian culture. And she... It excited her to know that she lives in Persia too, the way she talks in the book. Yes, she, she was actually, when, um, in the government of the Shah had her um, given the title of the official censor of the theater and the arts. And she was choreographing beautiful Persian dances. And it's funny, somehow it came to me because I uh, love to dance to Iranian music and I love Persian culture and, and the, the the joie de vivre that the Persian people have and the, the parties and the, the, um, the way to, to enjoy life. She was so attentive to detail. And the book is, and it just uh, talks like as if she's Iranian. The way she's uh, explaining and writing this novel, you would think an Iranian is writing it. Yes. به ایرانی همون بگم که آری در زم توی کامیونیتی خودش شیگیز آنوری ایرانیت Everybody who knows آری They know how close she is to our culture ادامه به در زم بزرگی Continue and tell more Let's talk about the book a little bit The story which takes place 
in 1940s Iran, which is when my grandmother Nila lived there. And the heroine, um, Shirin Bakhtiari, is a princess who's just a, a model for women because she's both feminine and yet she's very independent and accomplished. She is looking to have the, the, the love of her life, but she's also um, quite capable of managing herself and does many things. She travels and ultimately realizes that her place is in Iran helping her people. She's a, an accomplished horsewoman and uh, goes riding all over in, in her riding habit and with her lasso and her, her knives and uh, she's really a very um, full woman, encompassing everything that a, a woman today would like to be. And she falls in love with the, uh, one of the leaders of the Tuda party, Jamshid, who's a very handsome young man, not particularly interested in women, also an idealist, but he has a different view of how Iran should be. He wants to um, basically go against everything that Shireen has been raised with, uh, to redistribute the land and, and put the people in, in charge, give everything to the peasants. Um, there was a real, really a big problem in Iran at that time with the, the um, Soviet Union trying to take over and, and conspire with the Tuda party. Uh, but the way it comes across in the Bridge of Isfahan, my, my grandmother's book, that um, the Tuda party was really uh, just a, a group of idealistic people who were trying to do something good for Iran. Now this is not a political book, but it definitely in, uh, covers politics in Iran at that time. My grandmother had a, an immense appreciation and sense of the Persian culture and the people and the customs. So she wasn't taking sides with one group or another group. She just told the story as it is. And there's a lot of um, suspense. There's an opium ring. There's a lot going on in here that uh, really gives her an opportunity to share the true Persia with the world. And I think this book is great for Iranian people, but also for Americans and for all people all over the world to get a really good idea of what Persian culture is, because what we see on the TV today is very limited, very narrow. That's the purpose of the family support behind this book. Um, they decided to publish this book finally and uh, give it out. They, they thought it was, it's the right time. Um, uh, and I'm going to say it in Farsi too. Um, uh, Persian uh, community is not introduced. Unjuri ke bayat nis the ako unjuri ke Amerikai yai ke mahar dost daran and they are uh, as mahar khosheshum miad as culture mahar khosheshum miad, which it goes back all the way to the 1940s, even maybe even more, huh? Mumkin ye seri digi am bi am biron ke tapai ro publish konan and ari. Yeah, ممکنه اولی یا آخری نباشه uh, ولی در حقیقت پشتش اینه که ایرانیان and Persian culture needs to be introduced یعنی باید uh, uh, اون طوری که بوده و هستش معرفی بشه به دنیا یعنی که این کتاب is not فقط برای ایرانی ها نیستش برای همین به زبان انگلیسی از خانواده انگلیسی هن که پابلیشش کردن and uh, carry on sweetheart now you can say it in English I said that part in Farsi go ahead so I would like to share this book with everybody so that they can see what Persian culture really is, what the, how the people are. It's a, there's a diversity like every other culture. It isn't one political party or group or one segment of the population that people should know about. It. But it's, it's very beautiful and very rich and they have a, a wonderful, complex, long history and have contributed uh, a lot to, to civilization. And unfortunately, right now, the situation uh, is that we in the West don't know about that. We don't understand that. But my grandmother did, and that's why she was uh, so accomplished in Iran and had uh, really done so much for the, the promoting the Iranian culture and arts when she was living there. And this book, 
unfortunately was um, lying dormant for so many years I didn't even know about the manuscript. And a few years ago, my mother, Valentina, who was uh, editing the book uh, for this edition, she said, we need to get this published because it's about time. And I was amazed when I read it. I, cu I couldn't put it down. And she lives in New York. My mother lives in New York. My mother went to Radcliffe. Uh, she got her master's degree at, at Radcliffe, which is the women's division of Harvard uh, University. She got her master's degree in comparative literature. So she certainly is able to edit. Um, my mother, my grandmother uh, was writing quite a bit of um, her interpretation of the Quran about which she was quite enthusiastic, which was not at all an, a traditional sort of interpretation. Mm -hmm. Some of these things are not in this final edition of the book because my mother felt that was taking the reader too much away from focusing on the story itself. Mm -hmm. And the story itself is a wonderful story. It would make a terrific movie, actually. Even back in those days, my grandmother, Nilla, was thinking it would make even a better movie than a book. And um, Moshgan Which, by the way, we're looking for. We're looking for people who are interested to uh, read this story and see po the possibilities and chances for an opportunity to make a movie from this uh, story. It is perfect for a movie. Yeah, it's perfect. It has wonderful role models, especially in the character of Shireen, in spite of some of her flaws, that I, I feel that she's uh, unrealistically idealistic at she times. She was ahead of her time. But she was ahead of her time, just as my grandmother was also very ahead of her time. Uh, and my grandmother came from that sort of family, just to digress a bit. Uh, her uh, father, um, who's my great-grandfather, Jig or George Cram Cook, uh, was uh, married to uh, Nilla's mother and then divorced, and then married Susan Glaspell, who was a, a journalist and uh, also wrote plays. And together they started the Provincetown Players, both in uh, Massachusetts and in New York City. And when they felt that perhaps it was becoming too commercial, they moved on to Greece to, to work with the uh, Delphic festivals in Greece. So they were also quite ahead of their time and uh, had a very international perspective on things, and as did Nilla. Nilla had a, a very all-encompassing view of the world. Uh, very she was a very strong adventurist, and she felt safe in Persia, in Iran. Don't yes. you believe so? She felt yes. perfectly safe. She could pursue her dreams and have her adventures. And uh, that's the important part. The story um, is uh, written so uh, in detail that you can feel the comfort in her. Yes, she, she really did have an attention to detail because she spoke Farsi fluently. She understood the culture she was and a linguist. The people. She was a very gifted linguist. She spoke many languages and understood many cultures. Perfect. And uh, tell, <coughs> tell us a little bit about the kind of works that are, you can even Google it and find them in the computer that she was doing. Yes, um, if you Google Nilla Cram Cook, that's N-I-L-L-A uh, C-R-A-M-C-O-O-K, you find a lot of interesting information about her and her travels and her, her studies. And she was quite well known at her time. Today people um, have forgotten who she was and what she did. But this book, I hope, will um, ignite some interest and also especially uh, stimulate people's curiosity to know more about what was going on in, in Persia and what why things have happened the way they have and and to have hope. I uh, have a lot of hope for, for the Iranian people. I pray for them every day and um, hope that things will improve for uh, both Iran and for relations with the U.S. and Iran that things will will change and for the better. For the better and or best. Uh, Nila had big part in uh, 
in that uh, uh, I'm going to say it in some Farsi the things that you said so برای ایرانی همون که میخوام بدونن الان ما در مورد چه چیزایی صحبت کردیم خانم نیلا اکتیویتی های زیادی داشتن در رابطه با این که بین از نظر کالچری بین ایرانی ها و یو ایس پیپول با هم دیگه مردم با هم کانکشن داشته باشن و این کانکشن چولی مردمی باشه زبون های مختلفی رو صحبت میکردن بر همین فارسی هم خوب صحبت میکردن خانم نیلا Did she read and write in فارسی تو؟ yes. حتی به زبون فارسی می نوشته و می خونده بر همین تونسته از عربی هم همینطور کتاب قرآن رو Was she the first one who translated قرآن in uh, I don't know, I do know there are other English. translations of the Quran because I had a Saudi friend who gave me one right. <laughs> and it wasn't my grandmother's translation but um, I, as I said I'm sure there were yeah. others and I think that originally they weren't supposed to translate the Quran at all but uh, obviously it's it's been done so yes nila just be kesay bude ke avalin kesay bude ke quran ro translate kard be zabon englishi and she was uh, uh, smart enough ke hatta kar translation sho as family gereftan in ke you don't have a transcript of that translation in the, the last i heard of that it was somewhere in england and i would love to recover the manuscript. I don't know what became of it. Uh, by the way, she Nila must have done it right. Was, when she was a disciple of Gandhi, she also wrote a book called My Road to India, which talked about her experience in India with Gandhi. And she was received uh, as a fellow Indian because she spoke Sanskrit fluently and knew all the Vedic scriptures. And in fact, there is an Indian journalist right now who is working on a biography of Nila, and I hope sometime in the near future he will have finished that. But that's a, a separate chapter in her life, as I see it. This, she, just as Van Gogh had his different periods with different colors, she Nila has uh, her Indian period, her Greek period. She her had multi-dimensional. Yes. She had uh, multiple dimensions in her life, and. Uh, uh, she was uh, successful at many of them. Most of us, when we want to do several things at the same time simultaneously, we won't be successful at any of them. But she was very successful. That's why she's all over internet. If you Google her name, there's all kinds of dimensions coming. One of them is that she was also assigned to, uh, uh, for art, uh, what goes out and what comes in, what's allowed, what's not allowed, uh, to censor uh, certain things that uh, maybe uh, was not acceptable to our culture and she was so familiar with our culture that uh, she wanted to keep it uh, sort of like she felt it was perfect enough to keep it untouched so she was deciding certain things don't influence our culture uh, and, and try to change it. Khanum Nila Darzam Asen Shode Bud ke در تصمیم بگیره برای کارهای آرتی که توی دنیا معرفی میشه کدومشون توی ایران پروموت بشه و به کالچر ما صدمه ای نمیزنه و کدومشون نشه and she was doing a very good job and she was امریکایی بودن um, there is a picture of her before we get off uh, I want to make sure that picture is also showing uh, is it after introduction very first few pages you will see a picture of Nila um, see how young and she's also pretty very pretty woman I'm خوش گل بوده هم جوان بوده و انقدر intelligence داشته انقدر brave شجاع بوده که توی کشورهای مختلف زندگی کنه زبونهاشون کالچرهاشون رو یاد بگیره ولی کالچر ما تمام زبونها و کالچرهای دیگر رو تاب کرده بوده پلوی این شخصیت برای همین سعی میکنه که داستان خودش رو این فرم ناول یه داستان عشقی ارائه بده و شی هز اینجور که خانوادهش میگن تمام شخصیتش رو توی این کتاب پر کرده and برای همین is best time که الان بهترین موقع است و موقعیت که مادر آری تو نیویورک تصمیم گرفته که این کتاب رو uh, به بقیه دنیا معرفی کنه نه فقط ایرانی ها بلکه بقیه دنیا 
امیدوارم هستیم که نفر است فورورد کنه که بیان اینو به زبون فارسی ترجمه کنن که ما بتونیم در یه کراود ایرانی که فقط فارسی میخونن اویلوبول کنیم آری جان میبی در گونه تیک بریک لیس و یو که جست تیل رو بده باید the story in the book uh, the how it's a love story and she she talked about uh, in a novel form okay. in a I mentioned story. a little bit about how uh, Shirin uh, falls in love with Jamshid and Jamshid also Shirin by the way خانم نیلاس توی این داستان and it, it shows how the love transcends the cultural differences and the political differences and yet of course there are some problems and Shireen is the one who really being a woman especially in Middle East is surrendering her side a little bit more than Jamshid. He is quite set in his ways and determined to promote his program and his vision for Iran and really and truly it's they're both idealistic they both want what they feel is best. They just have a different approach. And if only today we would understand that more, that in all of our cultures, that most of us are, are having differences of opinion, but most of us do want what we feel is best. It's mm -hmm. just we don't agree yeah. on the way to, to, to get to the best result. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a, a, a big issue for all of us. But. I, I think Nila presents this in a very um, sensitive and neutral fashion and just with a lot of, of love and appreciation and it's a very engaging story. The, the, all the characters are very true to life and um, just when you read it you feel that you can't put it down and you have to find out what's going to happen next mm -hmm. and it's, it's really so an amazing book. And then it's full of surprises. Yes. Suspect, expect surprises. You're going to be surprised. Uh, you feel like an uh, Iranian is writing this uh, story. You're going to be surprised, you're going to enjoy it, and I think you're going to have a, a broader, deeper perspective of the real, the true Persia. True Persia, that's what we're trying to introduce to the world, not just the Iranian community. Uh, publicity to a Persian community as is the Bedar Shuru Kardim and has the Mikhaim Adamaiki interested has done in Ketabo Tarjomakonan Bahome or Lori Tamas Begiran Ketab Alon to Amazon.com available. Me to download going to your iPod, they can download it to the iPod, but me to into your iPod download going Ketabo. Uh, it's and publishers are working um, on uh, promotion in New York right now. But we have to get them in Koro in Masuliat of Hodom, but we have to get them to get over the Persian community as their channel. So I, I have a feeling that we haven't said enough about Nila herself. She is such an interesting uh, personality. I'm so excited about her, <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be a door opener for others to come out. There's going to be other families who are going to say, oh, my uncle, oh, my um, grandmother, or somebody in the family did something like this. But I don't think any of them have taken a step this far, uh, at least we don't know of. Maybe uh, she will not be the only family who, who is going to come up with this idea, but the story of this book is so interesting that we have a feeling producers or directors who are interested to create movies um, might contact us and we'd be welcoming to hear from them if anybody is interested. And they can contact Ari Lori uh, regarding to that. She is also, we are also looking. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Nila Cram Cook was way ahead of her time. خیلی جلوتر از وقتش بوده. خیلی چیزا رو به زبون خودش این توی این کتاب معرفی کرده که ایرانیات باید در موردش بدونن به خصوص خانم های ایرانی خیلی از ماها ممکنه فراموش کردیم در گذشته چه شخصیت های پرژن فیمیل بودن و چطوری 
به اون جایی که رسیده بودن رسیدن و ما میخوایم از طریق این کتاب به خانم های ایرانی بشناسونیم بفهمونیم که از جاهای مختلف می آمدن پرژیا و خیلی هم احساس کامفورت میکردن و راحت بودن شجاعانه دنبال رویاه ها و ماجره های زندگیشون بودن I think we don't have very much time so let's say goodbye now خیلی ممنون از وقتتون متشکریم و انشالله که با موفقیت و سلامت سلامتی بقیه روزو میگذرونین هر جای دنیا که هستین مرسی